Hi, this is Dr. Young. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about cancer prevention. And you might be wondering why plastic surgery is related to cancer. And what I'd like to tell you is that plastics and reconstructive surgery was born out of fixing people with cancers and other issues. So it's definitely a part of plastic surgery. Hi, this is Dr. Philip Young. We're Aesthetic Facial Body Plastic Surgery and the Beauty Docs on YouTube. After watching this video, we would love to have you come visit our website and learn about my award-winning theory that describes a mathematical answer to beauty. Thanks for watching and visiting our channel. If you enjoyed watching this, click the like button below. And I've had a lot of experience doing reconstructive surgery, including facial free flats, where I take a take a fibular bone like in your leg and I put it in the jaw, or I've taken a, a radio forearm flap and I've and I've uh, connected the vessels to put it in the throat. Uh, that's something I did in training. I, I don't do that now. Plastic surgery is definitely related to cancer in some ways. And what I do, sometimes I, I do have patients that, that have cancer. You know, that's, that's part of our lives and the people that we know. And so today, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about cancer prevention because I think there's a lot of things out there that people don't know that they're that they're still doing that could be causing cancer. So I just really wanted to put this out there uh, to help people so you can avoid uh, getting cancer. So here we go in terms of cancer prevention tips. One, I wanna talk about drinking. There's a lot of studies that if you do excessive drinking, if, in fact, there is a correlation between drinking too much and leading to more cancers, but there are some fascinating articles where they show that one to two drinks a night could decrease your risk for cancer as well as strokes and heart disease and how did that and and i thought that was fancy fascinating why does drinking lead to decrease in some cancers now cancers in the throat and the mouth there are equivocal and maybe there's some association to increased risk of cancer in the head and neck area so that would tend to tell you to drink a little less, like maybe one drink a night. But they've shown that if you drink one to two drinks a night, it can decrease your risk for strokes, heart disease, and cancer. And so why does it lead to cancer reduction? And I, I just, that fascinated me. And you know, it's related to some of the things that I've learned. Like for example, I went to this lecture just out of the blue that had nothing to do with head and neck surgery. And it talked about how blood flow can lead to 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 uh, a cancer if you have decreased blood flow you're more likely to lead to oxygen radicals that can lead to mutations in your DNA that can lead to cancer so having more blood flow is important so that there is some association with exercise in that re regard which I'll go into later but drinking alcohol is like uh, a chemically induced form of exercise and they thought about, oh, it could be antioxidants. It's related to the grapes and wines. But now they found that any type of alcohol can have the same effect, including shots, beer, wine, etc. So my, what I had thought is that it's related to being a chemically induced form of exercise. So, so drink one to two drinks a day, and if you can, just stick with one. And know that if you drink three or four more, three or four or more than two drinks like three or more, it actually reverses everything. It, it leads to an increased risk of heart conditions or cardiovascular conditions like strokes and heart disease and cancer. So don't drink more than two drinks a day to prevent cancer. So there's a lot of studies on having a plant-based diet leading to less cancer. Some of the studies show equivocal results, but in general what I found through the American Cancer Society and other articles, etc., because I've done the research for this, is that having a plant-based diet leads to less cancer. Processed meats lead to, lead to more cancers, processed foods, refined sugar, so there is some logic of, of those diets that are, that are related to less processing. The more natural they are, the better. There's even studies on grilled meats and grilled fish. If you grill too much and have too much of that, that can lead to cancer. And that might be kind of a downer because people love barbecuing, but whenever you char something, that black is actually carcinogen. So do it within moderation. I'm not saying not to do barbecue, but 
the less grilling you do, the less charring you do, the better. Now, they also talk about plant-based diets and you might be wondering, okay, where's my protein? And then you think, okay, if I take out my meats, I don't have any more protein. But the good thing is there's a lot of protein in certain vegetables and some of the top ones include peas, legumes like beans, uh, you can also have protein in kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, uh, lima beans, uh, those are all good sources. Artichokes, so there are protein in, in, in vegetables and also if you want to increase your protein you can also do more nuts. There's actually studies that show that people who eat more nuts have a dis decreased risk for cancer. So that's another th thing that I thought was uh, fascinating. Now obviously smoking is a really important factor in, in leading to cancer. Now I did a lot of head and neck surgery you know, in the past during my training, etc. And there is a lot of studies on both smoking and drinking potentiating their separate effects. They found that if you smoke and drink, your risk for cancer goes markedly up. So don't smoke first of all, try to reduce your risk for secondhand smoke as well and uh, uh, don't drink too much. Keep the drinks down to one to two drinks a night. Now there's some really also fascinating studies on vitamin use and I just had this discussion with another patient who said that she had breast cancer and she goes, I don't know why I got breast cancer. I was just sitting in the room with her the other day talking, we were doing a consultation, she says, I don't have it in my family and, and I don't know why. And I said, well, let me just go through these same things that I'm going through with you right now about the things to prevent cancer. And she goes, you know, I am a vitamin user. I use a lot of vitamins and, and she didn't know. She didn't know that vitamins can actually lead to cancer and, that, and that's the point that I want to bring up. There's a recent article out there where the National Institute of Cancer or the American Cancer Society looked at 20 different studies that looked into people who regularly take vitamins and they found that people who did take reg regularly take vitamins had an increased risk for cancer, which I've heard a long time ago, but now it's even more substantiated. And one time I remember when I was in, in USC, University of Southern California, I brought this up during a grand rounds discussion where I presented a patient and it's part of our learning process and I said, yeah, certain vitamins are associated with cancer and even my chairman was like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know that and he was shocked too. And I tell people, I try to tell people that all the time when I meet people during my consultations that don't take too much vitamins because that can lead to cancer and, and time and time again people are just shocked about hearing that. So, also the other thing is I read through these articles, I found that antioxidants, if you take too much antioxidants, that can lead to cancer too. So moderation is huge. Don't take too many supplements. Uh, in fact, I would not even suggest taking too many vitamins or any vitamins at all. Just have a good balanced diet and you're going to get plenty of anti-cancer uh, uh, substances which I recently uh, found in my yogurt and grapefruit peel. So plant-based diet is huge, avoid vitamins and antioxidants in excessive amounts. So a really important part of reducing cancer is exercise. In fact, they even found that if you do leisure exercise, it reduces your cancer even if you're the same weight, which is amazing. And they try to figure out why that is. And But there's, there's 13 cancers that are associated with a decreased risk of cancer based on the fact if you exercise and that includes colon, breast, endometrial, throat, liver, stomach, kidney, and leukemia are related to exercise meaning that if you increase your exercise you will have a decreased risk in those cancers and they also even showed head and neck cancers, rectal and bladder cancers were also decreased in people who exercise. So make sure you exercise because that's going to help prevent cancer. Now I want to also again bring up the fact of positive attitude. Positive attitude has definitely been shown to help in so many different factors. They've shown that endorphins, which are the positive hormone in your body, has beneficial effects to your white blood cells and all sorts of things. It makes your white blood cells, which fights off infections and cancers, work better. And there's a lot of studies on heart disease, that have shown that people who have a positive attitude are more likely to recover from a heart attack, 
prevent heart attacks and all sorts of things. I did a recent Snapchat on stress and holidays and they found that stress can lead to heart attacks. Why does it do that? Well, it leads to cortisol release, which can eventually lead to the fight or flight response. It can vasoconstrict your vessels, lead to more heart strain. I even discovered that stress is part of an evolutionary thing where when you get in a fight and you get stressed and you get cut, your body wants to clot to prevent blood loss so you can survive. So stress induces a pro-clotting state, meaning that if you have vasoconstriction in your heart or your body more strain in your heart and you also have more likelihood of clotting, you're more likely to form a clot in your heart that will lead to a heart attack. So decrease your stress levels. And part of that is, is increase your positivity. Watch a happy movie. Avoid a stressful situation as much as possible or learn some emotional meditation effects. You know, watching a, a comedy is important to bring more endorphins in you, you know, instead of a, a stressful movie. So watching comedies are really important as well. Obviously avoiding sun is really important. You know, sun can lead to these thymidine dimers in your skin uh, cells that basically cause your DNA to, to bind onto a different DNA and that's how the, the, the uh, sun, sun can lead to cancers in your, in your skin. And there's a lot of interesting facts about skin cancer that I can go into in more detail, but you can also write me as well. Obesity is also associated with, with cancer. You know, in, on top of not having a lot of exercise, apparently they've done studies in mice that show that certain mice who are obese are less likely to, to put out this anti-suppressing cancer called guanoline, uh, which eventually leads to epithelial changes in your colon and rectum which is the lining of, of the colon and rectum. So obesity by itself can lead to cancer. So they also talk about certain viruses leading to cancer and I've definitely learned that during med school. There's certain like Epstein-Barr viruses that can actually lead to mutations in your, in your cells that lead to some types of leukemia and lymphoma. So getting immunized is really important. So get immunized for hepatitis and even human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus is associated with cervical cancers and also head and neck cancers. In fact, I know someone that has throat cancer and he believes it's from having oral sex. So make sure to get uh, vaccinated from human papillomavirus. So avoid radiation. If you, can't, if you don't have to get radiation, don't do it. Decrease your number of times you get radiation from doing dental exams as well as CT scans. There's a new study that that showed that if you get a CT scan in childhood, you're gonna have increased, an increased risk for leukemia and brain cancer uh, if you have a CT scan in childhood in that next decade. So avoid, and I hear all sorts of stories, oh, I, I got these oral cancers because I got a lot of uh, x-ray exams for, you know, by my dentist when I was younger, so avoid radiation. Lastly, I wanna talk about avoiding environmental toxins. Now, sometimes you can't avoid everything in your life. You might as well live in a, a sterile environment like that kid in the bubble. But uh, if you know this, then you can kind of avoid things. Now, I had a family relative that had lung cancer, and we we're trying to figure out why he didn't have it in his family history, but he did have paint. He had a painting company or some paint uh, in, his, in his business that eventually led to have him having getting cancer. So avoid, avoid certain environmental toxins like asbestos, benzenes, air, aromatic amines, and uh, PCBs. PCBs, they're polychlorinated biphenyls. Now, where do you find benzene? Benzene is found in detergents, adhesive, glues, paints, inks, dyes, and, and gasoline. So make sure to avoid those things. Service stations are also associated with benzene. So. Obviously, you can't avoid all those things, but don't eat paint chips, don't sniff glue. All those things have benzene in it and can lead to cancer. Aromatic amines are also carcinogens, and they also are finding similar things like perfumes, dyes, and they find aromatic amines in grilled fish and, and meat. So if you do a lot of grilling, that's also tends to be more cancer causing. And again, I mentioned that back uh, earlier on that that you, sh don't, you don't have to avoid barbecue, but just kind of cut down on too much grilling. Actually, the part that's grilled, that really dark part, are, are carbons that are charred, and those are part of the um, portion that can lead to cancer. 
So if you want to reduce your carcinogens, decrease that risk of taking that charred part. And polychlorinated biphenyls are found in the same things, inks, dyes, etc. In fact, uh, contaminated water, evaporated contaminated water can also lead to, to more polychlorinated biphenyls, for example, the Great Lakes. Anyways, thank you for watching. I, I wanted to bring up cancer prevention because I talk about it a lot with my patients and it, it definitely applies in my life and it applies in all, you know, everybody's lives. No one wants to get cancer. So I thought this was going to be really beneficial because I talk about it again with my patients all the time and I just want to do something that can benefit people more in general because a lot of people don't know some of these uh, some of these things so anyways thanks for watching and leave me a comment or email me if you go to my website you can email me it goes straight to me and I'd love to hear from you thanks we would love to have you subscribe to our YouTube channel we're the beauty docs and our goal is to give you a glimpse into our lives in plastic surgery we would love also to show you the human side of what we do we'll do this by sharing anonymous stories about our patients and try to find some moral or learning point Hopefully we'll be able to enrich our lives together. Click the annotations shown here to subscribe and be the first to learn about some fascinating things. To learn more about our award-winning theory on beauty that breaks it down to mathematics. To see our latest video on a plastic surgery story of hope about a patient with myasthenia gravis and ovarian cancer. Or upcoming stories and learning points related to our field in medicine and plastic surgery. See you next time.